Torah. Shalom and blessings, children of Yahuwah and the truth. We are continuing on with the action to Sora, the, the Yahuwah's redemptive story. We are on video number 30, a fishy story based on Jonah or um, Yonah. Yahuwah sends a message to Yonah, a prophet of Yasharal. Go to the corrupt city of Nineveh and tell the people if they don't turn away from their sins, I will destroy them. Jonah immediately makes his way to Joppa, a busy seaport town with ships going to all corners of civilization. There he inquires of his ship's captain, Where's the ship going? To, to Tarshish. Is that close to Nineveh? Oh, I'm sorry, it's the opposite direction from Nineveh. Perfect. Having paid for his journey of disobedience, Jonah boards the ship. I'm sorry, Yahuwah, I can't go to such a filthy, despicable place as Nineveh. Stop, I'm trying to help. This man will stay. Yeah, he will. But Yahuwah isn't about to let Jonah get away from his duty that easily. He hurls a great storm at Jonah's ship. The ship is going to break apart in this wind. Throw the cargo overboard. It's our only chance. <clears throat> Someone must have angered the Allahims. It wasn't me, I don't think. But the storm only rages on more fiercely. <clears throat> Although Jonah knows that Yahuwah is angry with him, he doesn't admit to the sailors that, he, that his disobedience is the cause of the storm. In desperation, they draw straws to find out who has angered the Allahims. Jonah, what did you do to anger your Allahim so? I know the one true Allahim, and I am not doing what he has asked me to do. Just throw me overboard to death, to my death, and then Yahuwah will let your ship go. But the sailors don't want to throw Jonah into the sea. They try to row back to land, but the sea gets even more rough. We'll never make it. It's getting worse. We have no choice. We'll have to throw Jonah overboard. Adonai, don't be mad at us for throwing this man into the sea. Look, what is that thing? Jonah assumes he will drown, but Yahuwah doesn't intend to let him off that the hook that easily. Adonai, help me. These teeth are coming at him. Hmm. The moment the sea monster swallows jo Jonah, the storm calms. At, at this, the sailors give praise to Yahuwah, who, who they now know commands all of nature. But Jonah is not dead. Yahuwah keeps him alive inside the giant fish for three days and three nights. This gives him lots of time to think and pray, and maybe realize how arrogant it was to disobey his Adonai. Adonai, I called out to you, and you saved me. The waters were all around me, but you kept me safe. You are the one who saves. Yahuwah hears Yonah's prayer and makes the fish spit him up on dry ground. Now do what I have commanded. Once again, Yahuwah tells Jonah to go to Nineveh. This time Jonah obeys. Turn away from your sin, or the whole city will be destroyed. This is what Yahuwah says. And when Yahuwah does punish you like you deserve, don't say I didn't warn you. But to Jonah's shock and dismay, the people actually listen to him. To show him how sorry they are, they put on black clothes, even the king. <clears throat> this is a royal order. Call out to Yahuwah with all your hearts. Stop doing evil. Then Yahuwah might take pity on us. Yahuwah sees that the people of Nineveh have turned away from their sin. Then true to his Kodesh word, he does not destroy them after all. Jonah does not take Yahuwah's change of heart very well. I should have known, even when people are scum and deserve to die, you show them mercy, Adonai. Just kill me, if this is the kind of work you're going to ask me to do. But Yahuwah scolds Jonah for his attitude. You're always so willing to die, you and your pride. <clears throat> but there are 120,000 people in the city, city of Nineveh, and I desire that they have the chance to live. <clears throat> Four prophets. 
speak to Yahuwah's people in different ways. <clears throat> Hosea. Hosea loves his wife, Gomer, very much, but one day she leaves him. The law says Hosea can divorce his wife, or Asha, but he chooses to stay married to her. He tells the people of Yasharal that they have treated Yahuwah the same way. Yahuwah loves his people, but they have run away to worship idols. Don't you see how much Yahuwah loves you, even though you don't love him back? If Yahuwah can love an unfaithful people, then, he, then I can love an unfaithful wife, or Asha. Amos. Amos, a shepherd and fig picker, is watching his sheep when Yahuwah calls him to a dangerous job. Amos goes to the city of Bethel in Yasharal and gives Yahuwah, Yahuwah's message. You are like a crooked wall that must be destroyed before a new one can be built. Joel, um, what, what the big locust miss, the young locust will eat. But if you will turn back to Yahuwah, he will repay you for what the locusts have eaten. And in the later days, Yahuwah's spirit will be with you. Your children will prophesy, the elderly will dream dreams, and the young will see visions. Like a mighty army destroying everything in its path, millions of locusts swarm over Yehuda. They eat all the crops and leave empty fields behind. Micah, yeah, or Micah. Um, you hate, okay. Micah, a small town prophet, wants life to be better for the poor. He dares to tell the wealthy leaders of Yehuda and Yasharal what they are doing wrong. You hate justice and you hold down the poor. You know what Yahuwah wants you to do. Be fair, be forgiving, and be friends with Yahuwah. One day in the little town of Bethlehem, a Savior will be born and his kingdom will last forever. <clears throat> a burning coal based on Isaiah 6. One day a young man named Isaiah is praying in the temple when he sees a vision. The Adonai is seated on a throne, flying around him are seraphim, heavenly creatures with six wings. When they speak, when they speak, the walls shake and the temple fills with smoke. Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh is the Adonai Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. I am ruined, for I am a sinful man from a sinful nation, and now my unclean eyes have seen the Adonai in his glory. At Isaiah's cry, one of the seraphim flies to the altar. Right here. The seraph, the seraph touches Isaiah's lips with a hot coal. Your sin is taken away. Then Yahuwah speaks. Whom shall I send to speak to this sinful nation? I am here, send me. <clears throat> With this courageous answer, Isaiah starts on his journey to become one of the greatest of the Hebrew prophets. He prophesied mostly during the reign of King Hezekiah. <clears throat> Hezekiah's healing. Based on 2 Kings 17, 1 through 18, 16, and 20, 2 Chronicles 29 through 30, and Isaiah 38 through 39. Through the influence of prophets like Isaiah, Hezekiah is a righteous king. Our fathers disobeyed Yahuwah, and Yehuda has become weak. We will serve the Adonai and with his help make our nation strong again. But before Hezekiah can begin to reform the religion of Yehuda, a catastrophe strikes. Off to the north, the people see smoke and fear the worst. Before long, shocking news fills the streets of Jerusalem with grief and alarm. The king of Assyria has destroyed the city of Samaria and taken the people of Yasharal away as captives. Our brothers murdered? Our sisters taken from the land Yahuwah gave us? With the fall of Samaria, the northern kingdom of Yasharal comes to an end. Great masses of people are carried away, never to return. The few Yasharalites left in the land mix with the other nations that the conquerors bring in. With Yasharal conquered, we are all that remain of Yahuwah's people, and Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, will not be content with just Yasharal. His next move will be against Jerusalem. We must prepare to defend the city, both spiritually and physically. 
At Hezekiah's orders, the temple is repaired, and the king leads his people back to the worship of Yahuwah. Yahuwah's Kodesh temple has been rebuilt in Yerushalayim. King Hezekiah invites all Yashualites everywhere to come and worship in the house of the outer knee, especially those scattered in exile by the Assyrians. We welcome you home to Yahuwah's temple. Right here. <coughs> At Hezekiah's direction, workers build a tunnel between a spring outside the walls of a, and a pool inside the city. This will protect the flow of water to us and cut off the water supply for the Assyrians. My brothers are helping to build up the walls. Thank you, Hua. We have a king who will defend us. Here. Then Hezekiah calls the people together. Don't be afraid. We have more power on our side than Assyria has because the Adonai Yahuwah is with us. Hezekiah fights off Assyria, but ten years later the Assyrians attack again. This time he pays Assyria a ransom of silver and gold to leave Yehuda alone, and he is forced to take some of it from Yahuwah's temple. Soon afterward, he becomes deathly ill. The prophet Isaiah visits him at his sickbed. I am sorry, my king. The Adonai has spoken. Get your will ready and choose your heir to the throne. You will not recover from this sickness. After Isaiah leaves, Hezekiah cries out to the Adonai, Adonai, haven't I been your faithful servant? I've served you with my whole heart and tried to do what you think is good. At that moment, Isaiah comes back into the room. Very well, Yahuwah has heard your prayers. He will give you another 15 years to lead his people, but don't rule in fear. Make sure you lead them in Kodeshness and faith. Thank you, Adonai. As proof of your promise, will you make the shadow of the sundial of Ahaz go backwards 10 degrees? Hezekiah looks out the window at the steps of the sundial. Yahuwah miraculously makes the sun move backwards in the sky to show he will keep his promise to Hezekiah. See the light changes in each of these pictures. After Hezekiah gets better, ambassadors, ambassadors visit him from a distant country called Babylon. Our king heard you were sick and sent us with these letters and, and a gift. Well, thank your king for me. May I show you around? Hezekiah shows off his army and all the riches he has stored up in the temple and his various warehouses. After they've seen every piece of wealth in the city, the ambassadors head back to Babylon. As they're leaving, the prophet Isaiah comes to see his king. Who were those men and where did they come from? They were ambassadors from some far off country you've never heard of. I forget the name. Babel, Babalu, Babylon. Very nice fellows. I showed them all my treasures. You prideful king, you may defeat the Assyrians, but Babylon will one day be the destruction of Yehuda. Your descendants will be taken away from Jerusalem and serve as slaves to the Babylonian king. Oh, well, at least it won't happen in my lifetime. What a selfish king. All right, next time we will be reading Insults and Prophecies. Isaiah 53, a prophecy, a righteous king and a reluctant prophet. Why do bad things happen to good people? And that is the last one we'll read um, tomorrow because that next chapter is very long. I hope you guys enjoyed Yahuwah's redemptive story today. And it's time to praise our Abba Yahuwah. Toda Rabba. Abba Yahuwah, Tona Rabba, Abba Yahuwah, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hoo ah. All praises, all praises and esteem to our mighty King. Tola Rabba, 
All praises to Yahuwah. All praises to Yahuwah. Baruch Hava Bashem Yahuwah. Baruch Hava Bashem Yahuwah. Shalom and blessings, children of Yahuwah and the truth warrior parents of the children of you who are in the truth. Um, Baruch you all. Shalom and blessings.